when it sells it, we're not going to show any gains or losses. We're just going to change our equity section. If the sale results in a loss of control, then we're going to show gains or losses. But there's two different ways here. If we sell a subsidiary and it doesn't affect our controlling the company, we're just going to show the change in the equity section. Okay? But if it affects, we lose control, our controlling interest, then we'll show a gain. Does that make sense, guys? Remember that. So, subsidiary stock selling it. If the parent retains any of its former subsidiary shares, the investment needs to get remeasured to fair value on the date the control is lost. Any resulting gain or loss needs to be recognized in the income statement. If it sells less than the entire investment, the parent needs to show which cost assumption um, it needs to use, but we're not going to deal with that piece because we're just keeping it simple. So we're not going to worry about that. So basically, I want to go back to the book because the book explains the um, PowerPoint slides much more specifically. What I would like for you to make sure you do if you look at this again is to really look at page 158 and understand how this consolidation is happening. It explains thoroughly how the various accounts are added and how we ultimately zero out the equity in the subsidiary. Okay? and how we also determine the non-controlling interest portion of the equity section. Um, so we're not gonna worry about non, I mean, this is the main thing we're gonna deal with. What I'd like to do is take some time, let's go over some problems before we start on number 30 and 38. Those are the two homework problems, and I'd like to do it in class today, if you guys are game with that. So let's look, just to get some understanding here. Number one says, What is the basic premise of the acquisition method regarding accounting for a non-controlling interest? Would it be A, consolidated financial statements should be primarily for the benefit of the parent company's stockholders? Should it be B, Consolidated financial statements should be produced only if both the parent and the subsidiary are in the same basic interest in um, industry. Should it be C? A subsidiary is an indivisible part of a business combination and should be included in its entirety regardless of the degree of ownership. Or D, consolidated financial statements should not report a non-controlling interest balance because these outsider owners don't hold stock in the parent company. The goal here is to present an entity in its entirety, okay? Because when we present financial statements, the one aspect you learned back in Principles 1 is an entire entity is shown separately from all others. Technically, when a parent owns a significant portion of a company, they really are one company. So we need to report it as such. 
What's different in this chapter is we're showing the non-controlling section in the equity section. We have to, okay? So that's a new piece you're seeing. <coughs> when you guys, guys go and start looking at other like 10K reports or annual reports, you know in your spare time how you love accounting and you just wanna look all the time? This will start making more sense to you. You'll see many big companies that show in their equity section the non-controlling interest portion. Okay, so what is the correct answer here, guys? C. C. Do you guys get that? That that's C? The subsidiary is an indivisible part of a business combination and needs to be included in its entirety, despite there are some of the ownership in that subsidiary is not part of the parent, but it still needs to be included. Does this, is this helpful going through some of these? Okay. Are you still recording? Oh, okay. You're just ending it? Okay. I'm, yeah, I'm going to try. But you were just recording the last problem? I thought I was recording. 